morning and happy Wellness Wednesday. How are you? Are you well? I'm extremely well, thank you. You're extremely well? Well, because the weather is delightful. It feels oh like summer. Oh my gosh, doesn't it? Well, n the planet doesn't like it so much, no. apparently. Yikes. Have you heard? The hottest June in the history of weather. <laughs> in the history of the planet. Like, there has never been a warmer June since they started recording temperatures. I think we need to talk Europe to the dinosaurs. In Europe and around the world. They might the have seen dinosaurs. It. It's 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 from the what you call it the global warming, but yeah. it's what's the it's it's oh greenhouse gas emissions it's causing this global. Warming. So the whole month was the warmest on Earth so far. Yeah, in Europe and around the world, the highest temperatures ever recorded since the beginning of recording temperatures. Yikes! One percent warmer than last year. The whole planet. That's a lot of percentage that when it is, comes to a whole yeah. planet. And then um, just very recently, and still might be occurring actually, a huge heat wave in places like France of like 45 degrees. Yeah, I think like vegetables are cooking outside in the heat or something like that. I heard something. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're actually cooking. Talk about takeout. 45? Imagine. No. You know how they have all the decorative fountains and stuff? They're allowing people to actually to get go, in them and go splash, yeah, and splash. go and get some bottles and drink wow. up. Yeah, scary stuff. Hey, Drake is at it again. He's apparently mounting his own What's personal campaign to uh, to make sure that Kawhi Leonard is, stays with the Raptors because, of course, you probably heard um, he's his contract's up. So he's been. Um, what what do you say approached by uh, LeBron James and Magic Johnson so a lot of people are thinking that he's gonna go to the Lakers um, but I guess we'll have to wait and see is that what that guy was singing that song on a YouTube video about why come to the Lakers there was a guy singing the song really he, yeah he was like singing lyrics to some song playing his guitar or whatever or playing a keyboard and he changed the lyrics to some song about Kawhi come to the Lakers I forget that's anyway. funny yeah that's funny so they're um, actually writing songs about it to woo him yeah so Drake is like right in there doesn't just, want him to go to the no, Lakers no no he wants him to stay and it's interesting because social media has um, like a, a very polarizing reaction to Drake I think um, during the playoffs I'm sure you'll remember lots of people were kind of annoyed with him because he's very he was very vocal sitting right on the sidelines touching the coach at one point you know people are like okay buddy relax chill so on social media now a lot of people are are thinking yeah Drake you're not helping because he's yeah because he's kind of annoyed some people oh. so I don't know what well I don't think that Drake's gonna sway it I don't think so either I think it's gonna be the money 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 talks. right can you imagine how much money this doesn't always work? talk Nike taking a huge loss I think they had to Okay, so for those of you who don't know this story, um, Nike was about to release a new sneaker uh, with the Betsy Ross flag on the ankle. The Betsy Ross flag is the circular flag. It was the there's the only 13 the colonies, the 13 colonies before the United States became the United States. They were colonies, right? So anyway, this was a revolutionary era flag, which coincided with the existence of slavery. So Colin Kaepernick says, uh, is, yeah, there it yeah, is. There okay. It is, yeah. So Colin Kaepernick says, and yeah, you know what? Um, you're releasing a shoe with a flag that came from the era of slaves. I don't think it's a good idea. Mm. I don't support that. They were already sent to the retailers. They weren't on the shelves yet. They were supposed to go on sale this week for the 4th of July holiday. And all the retailers got a notice saying, send them back with no explanation. Imagine the ding Nike is taking for that. So now, Colin's a, got a little pull there, huh? Well, you know what? Here's why he has a little pull. Since he became their spokesperson or whatever, their sort yeah. of mm -hmm, their sales jumped seven percent and their stock Ooh. is up twelve percent. And he inspired record public engagement in the corporate brand. Holy! So they say it would be hypocritical not to listen to him after he helped them brand the label the way that he has. Mm -hmm. Interesting too to watch this discussion on social media because there there are a lot of people who who don't who see the the Betsy Ross flag and think of it as one of the original flags right. and you know it's it's kind of very historical and it's traditional and stuff. It just so happened to coincide with 
the history of slavery in the United States of America. But lots of people are kind of like, it was one of our originals, right. so To date, it has never been really associated with no. racism or any of that, but, but he's making a point, and yeah. so Nike went along with it. Now, uh, there's a lot of backlash, obviously, from the conservatives in the US. There's a hashtag going on, Twitter, walk away from Nike. But it's funny because on the other hand, the reaction is, well, wait a minute, all you conservatives who are saying you're going to boycott Nike, didn't you already boycott Nike when Colin Kaepernick became the spokesperson, the take a knee guy, and you didn't want it? Didn't, yeah. didn't you already burn your Nikes, all you conservatives? So what did you do? You went out and you bought more Nikes or you changed your mind? You supported the brand for a while? You already gave up on Nike. So walk away from what, America? Right? It's conservatives. Yes. Anyway, it's getting to the point now where the governor of Arizona, Doug Ducey, He's asking the state's commercial authority with, to withdraw financial incentives promised to Nike to build a plant in Arizona. Whoa. He's willing to not have them build a plant in Arizona because he's so mad about Stop them take, recalling the Betsy Ross flag on their sneakers. <laughs> you know what? How far Nike, will you take your little plans, move as far away as from you Arizona. can from that guy's city. And go and Arizona set state, up. the entire yeah. state of Arizona. Set yourself up in another state, thinking mm -hmm. you're going to be okay. What a goof, <laughs> right? You know, and it's it's this whole thing about the the conservative party. I mean, one of the, I think I said yesterday one of the reasons Kim Jong Un likes Donald Trump is because he's an immoral leader, an amoral amoral leader, because he puts yeah. commerce ahead of People. morality. Mm -hmm. And that's why dictators like him, because they don't care about human rights. They care about the dollar, right? Plus, if I was him, Un, I would want to meet him just to meet him, because he's such such a boisterous personality. So for me, the hypocrisy is that they say, "Oh, well, you know, Trump is an amoral leader," mm -hmm. and they all follow him regardless of what he says about women, about races, about religions. But no matter he what he say says, anything he wants. they follow him, and yet. You say one bad thing about the United States of America or the flag, and they're like, what? Mm -hmm. How dare you? Yeah. We don't care if we're killing children at the border. How dare you insult our flag? Yeah, yeah it's interesting. Yep. It's, it's, um, hey, people are very polarized. On July the 3rd, on this date in 1812, getting ready for Independence Day in the U.S. On July the 4th, of course, they celebrate 1776. Well, in 1812, all Americans were ordered to leave Canada. So Out! The War of 1812, the day before <laughs> Independence Day. Have a nice day. See Get ya. Get out of Canada. We're not like that anymore. Now you can come up here. Now you long, can. As yeah. long as you're not a Trump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? A couple of weeks ago, maybe a week and a half ago, I was talking about Anderson Cooper and how his, his mom passed away. Gloria, Gloria Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. Yeah. Jeez. And she was talking, of, he was talking about the fact that he wasn't getting any money from her. Yeah, she and he said. said, he said, like, right from the time he could understand what that meant, she's been saying to him, you know what, you're not getting my inheritance. And she had a fair amount of money. Um, it one ends time up she was the that, richest girl in the world. Yeah. It ends up that he is getting the bulk of her inheritance. She lied to him. For $200 million. <laughs> and Anderson, by the way, is making $12 million a year. <laughs> Peanuts. Would you work? So, I, would, I wouldn't work. I would so not work. Well, but wanted, see, it's I mean, not about money for him. He likes the work. Obviously, if you're yes. making $12 million a year, I couldn't spend $12 million in a year. So, oh, there's Gloria there. <laughs> Look at her. Yeah. With all of her yeah. plastic surgery. So she surprised her son. $200 million. Yeah. That's, I'd like to be surprised like that. Hello. Hey, it's Eat Beans Day. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Um, oh, no. Come You're on, not no. going to, are you? It's good for you. Legumes, right? Yes. They have protein, vitamins, minerals, fiber. There's no fat. They're low in cholesterol, low carbs, great for diabetics. Over 40,000 variety of beans. They're rich in antioxidants and they lower your cancer risk. Everybody should eat beans and fart all day. Or, or eat beans and it says, eat that. What oh, I don't stuff? like those baked beans, though. Oh, I love them. You like baked beans? <gasps> love them. They have to be in the Do you do it with hot dogs in them? I used to, yes. I haven't for Did you? years. Are you going to do that today? Go Maybe. home and eat beans. No, I'm not making beans. Maybe I'll crack a can. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Crack a can of beans. Although, my mamere was the best bean maker in the who, world. You're my mamere? My mamere. Oh, my word. 
She was just How awesome. She, like baked beans. Oh, baked in this in this old um, cast iron yeah. cauldron looking a thing cauldron. with uh, pork, salt pork chunks and Ooh. oh, so good molasses. And Do you still have that recipe? No. Does your mother? Yeah, actually. Hey, Eunice, happy birthday. Yeah, my mom's birthday today. Happy birthday, mom. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, on the show today is Wellness Wednesday, so we're talking about Alzheimer's and the Arch uh, Hospice. So uh, stay with us, and Luann has the news. All that and more coming up on Mornings with Luann and Tim. With over 45 years of experience, All Ontario Well Drilling offers hydrofracking and all well drilling services. Call 705-575-8088 or 705-257-9495. At Maitland Ford Lincoln, we see our trucks everywhere. We see them on Queen Street, Lake Street, North Street, Bay Street, Second Line, Third Line, Fourth Line, Pine Street, Great Northern People's Road, Wellington, Coral Road, Bruce Street, Carmen's Way, Northern Ave, Trunk Road. Folks come from all over Algoma District and beyond to buy their truck at Maitland Ford Lincoln. Amazing prices, outstanding service. King Street, Shannon Road, Goodly Bay, Black Road, Government Road, and even on Pine Shores. Yep, our trucks are everywhere. Get yours at Maitland Ford Lincoln, built for Northern Life, on Great Northern Road, just north of the hospital. With three brands to choose from, from Kawasaki, Suzuki, and CF Moto, visit one of our four showrooms today and speak with our knowledgeable, friendly, and enthusiastic staff who will be happy to help you with all of your motorsports needs. Enjoy life, enjoy the ride, by Robinson Motorsports. Welcome back to Mornings with Luann and Tim. Joining me live in the studio, I have Doug Isles and our friend Bia Fioramonte. Not that you're not our friend, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> so you're a barber shopper. Uh, I am. How many years at the barber shoppers? 41. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Doug. Yeah. Wow. You wouldn't think I was 41 years Never old. Never would guess that. Where do you sing? Where's your... What? I'm a bass. You're, you're a bass. All right. Good morning, Doug. Yeah. Bia from the Alzheimer's Society. Nice to have you back again. Thanks for reaching out to us about our volunteer visitor program. The volunteer program. visitor program. Doug, you've been a volunteer visitor with the Alzheimer's Society for how many years? Seven years. Remarkable. Um, you have had how many companions? Have, <coughs> Mern is my second. Mern is your second. In Jim, seven years. Jim was my first. Jim was your first. Mern yeah. is your second. Bia, how long has this program been going on? And tell me a little bit about the background of it. Um, well, the program's probably been running for about 20 years. Okay. And in the beginning, we were only able to recruit maybe two or three volunteer visitors. Now we have about 10 volunteer visitors. Okay. But this program actually enhances our recreational therapy program. So, so it's an element of it? Yes. Okay. We, um, we actually have a waiting list of 77 people waiting to be matched. Oh, we it's, need 77 more Dougs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or at least 35 who can do two people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> can you have multiple friends? Oh yes. Well you can. Yes. Okay. Um, if you have the time and you're able to um, get matched up with a second. We have had a few volunteers that have done that in the past. Um, Speaking of time, may I just ask Doug, what kind of time commitment do you, uh, does your volunteering mm -hmm. take? 
Once a week, yes. two to three hours, oh. but it can be one to two hours. It kind of depends on the friend and the and the volunteer visitor. I've, okay. So do you work out your visits with, with Mern, or do you just sort of work on your schedule, or uh, what? Uh, every two, I meet Mern every Tuesday uh, in the early afternoon. So you have a regular appointment with so, Mern. Yeah, but okay. he's, he's flexible, yeah. and I'm flexible. <laughs> so if we're traveling, it can be some other day. Where do you go to meet Mern? Uh, he's at the Davy home at oh. the moment, but up until a couple of months ago, he was in his own home. So you actually went to Mern's house? I did. And you hung out together and you went out for outings and stuff? Or uh, what? We, we, we did. And a favorite spot was the curling club where his niece was curling and my wife was curling. No so. kidding. <clears throat> you had stuff in common already too. Mern's comment was, these ladies are really old. <laughs> So how, now, is that something, Bia, that you do at the Alzheimer's Society? He mentions that curling was something that they had in common. Do you find commonalities between the volunteers and the friends? Definitely. We try to find those commonalities, things that they have in common, things that they have interests that are the same. It just makes the visits that much more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And then um, the activities can be whatever. It could be sitting and chatting. Being a very good listener is one of the skills that we're looking for. Being a good conversationalist. Right. Um, if you like to play cards, um, you would be playing cards, board games, um, going out into the garden, whatever interests the person. Did cribbage for something? That uh, Mern is a superb cribbage player, and <laughs> we have, it, it's not a, any in any way a one-sided competition. <laughs> he remembers, and uh, he's, I would say he's up on me. Really? Yeah, he is very good. I'm still counting while he's <laughs> sitting there with his arms folded. So... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Many things stay very strong with with him. Now, so and Bia, we know for a fact that what Doug is doing with Mern is he's keeping Mern firing on all pistons, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a great mm -hmm. thing. It's almost mental gymnastics, right? And this yes. is something that really that really uh, will help fight. The dementia. Am, am I right about yes, that? Yes, you're helping to improve their quality of life, which is the Alzheimer's Society's mandate. Okay. So the way I put it is you can't get any closer to helping someone with the disease than becoming a volunteer visitor. And again, we only have a handful of volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, we'd really like to see this particular volunteer visitor position explode and have a lot more volunteers. Um, we don't just throw someone into a home and say, here you go, go have your visit. Mm -hmm. um, there's an interview that they have with me. There is a vulnerable person's police check that's done. Okay. Three reverence. You passed. Re <laughs> mm, <barely>. <laughs> <laughs> Three reference checks and um, three reference checks. Yes, okay. um, an interview, um, and then they sit with the exec executive director Terry for a bit. Yes, and then um, they get educational training from Janice. You probably remember Janice Absolutely. from our educational sessions. Mm -hmm. And I did educational sessions because my mother had dementia. So yes, yes, and um, and then they're actually matched. One of our rec therapists goes into the home of someone on the waiting list. Okay, uh, assesses them to make sure they're still eligible for the program sure and once the volunteers actually accepted into the volunteer visitor program they go with that individual for that first visit oh you're introduced by them. someone to make sure that everything is the first you're time. comfortable <clears throat> yes. in the beginning yeah. very very easy entry into the job yes <clears throat> and so how many hours is that then for that whole process when do you recall it's been seven years now was it did it feel like uh, it was oh, an arduous no. process or boom? No, not at all. No. It, it was just a few visits with a companion until everybody felt comfortable and then you're on your own. What about the training? Was that interesting for you to, it was. to go to the Alzheimer's Society and learn about the yeah. disease? Yes, I found that too when we went for our training as a family. That mm -hmm. the, We say that, I always say that the education that I received from the Alzheimer's Society was it didn't make the disease any less, uh, the future for my mother any less scary, you know, but it made it easier to deal with because you have an understanding of what's coming. Now you've already with your first uh, your first friend was his name is Jim. Jim. Now you were with Jim for quite a time. I was from uh -huh. you would say mid stages or what? From Early. mid stages of mid -st dementia when he was at home mm -hmm. and uh, visiting at that time was a great relief to his wife who could go out and shop and do a few things. You're giving some respite so to, the respite to the caregiver. That was a uh, break for her. Uh, Jim moved into the Davy home yes. and declined, and uh, every just took every day as it came. Yeah. So it it was a 
fast decline and right yeah so and you were with Jim right to the end I was now, so so you've seen the ins and outs of this disease now you've gone back again and would uh, you do it again yes yeah. yeah all right yes and I would encourage anybody who uh, is thinking about it and maybe a little bit nervous <clears throat> the training is is makes you comfortable the <clears throat> experience of doing it uh, enhances your life it does it uh, it opens things that you never knew uh, was it were inside you and right. uh, so it's 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 a good feeling uh, uh, it's enjoyable you learn things that uh, about the world. The I'm world. thinking of Mern, who's who's an old bushwhacker, and oh. he and I talk about all kinds of things. He's that got I, some stories. He remembers those stories very well. Well, sure, because the the long term memory stays uh, yeah. tends to stay with certain forms of dementia. And I think most forms of dementia, the long term mm -hmm. memory stays longer yeah. than the short term. Is mm -hmm. that true? Yes. Yeah. Yes. How many people have carried their firewood across Wawa Lake with a dog team? Mern has. Wow. So. <laughs> you learn a lot. You yeah. do. Yeah. So uh, we've got. So we need to clear this list of seventy-seven people. We need the volunteers. Yes. How? What happens? How do we? How there, do they get a hold of you? There is a criteria. You do need to oh. be eighteen. So, Doug, uh, he again, just I barely just got barely that. Made it. Yeah. Okay. And then um, you would just call the office and um, ask for myself. Let me know of your interest. Then we set up an interview at a mutual time. We sit down um, and do the interview. We're finding out about the individual, and um, and then we just get the process going with the reference checks, police checks. Right. Um, that process may take a week or two. Okay. That's all. If it's in the summertime, sometimes it's hard um, with holidays and that kind of thing. Sure. But um, there's nothing more rewarding than becoming a volunteer visitor, and the need is there. So. And it really can make such a difference in so many lives as we say not just the friend not just Mern mm -hmm. but Mern's family whatever oh, if Mern, Mern has you know had caregivers that the respite and also the personal gain that you get just mm -hmm. from from feeling good about your what you're doing and also as you say the, you're getting another friend too right yes. you so win -win your, your for client becomes a friend very quickly yeah you yeah. they're not even really clients are they they're no, no they're yeah. friends they are so you get a hold of Bia yeah, it's easy and if you don't know the phone number well just google it google Alzheimer's Society Sault Ste. Marie but what is the phone number 942-2195 there you go 942-2195 Doug I want to thank you for joining mm -hmm. us today thank you, and I'm sure that Mern thanks you as well and uh, thank you Bia always a pleasure to have you on the show thank you. It's the Volunteer Visitor Program, the Alzheimer's Society of Sault Ste. Marie. Join Doug and get that 77 people off the list and get them some friends. Jo volunteer for the Alzheimer's Society. You can change a life, including your own. We'll be back with Luann after this on Mornings with Luann and Tim. Ontario established a $100 million affordability fund to help Ontarians who don't qualify for low-income conservation programs ease the burden of their electricity bill. Whether you rent or own your home, as long as you pay your electric bill, you could qualify. There are three levels of support available. The first is a home energy kit with upgrades like smart power bars and LED light bulbs. The second includes Energy Star appliances that help keep things cool during the hot summer months. The third is for electrically heated homes so that your power bills don't break the bank during those long Canadian winters. Plus, all upgrades, including installation, are completely free of charge. Visit affordabilityfund.org or call 1-855-494-FUND to find out if you qualify. When you support the ReStore, it helps Habitat for Humanity build affordable housing for families. How does this work? 
New and gently used goods are donated to the ReStore. The sale of these goods generate funds for building homes. For every $1 spent at the ReStore, there is a $4 return on investment within our community. For example, Habitat homeowners have better educational outlook, increased employment stability, improved health, and reduction in the use of social services. Every donation and every dollar we receive through the ReStore helps build sustainable housing for future homeowners. Everyone needs a foundation to build a future. To find out more and how you can help, drop by the ReStore at 32 White Oak Drive or go to habitatsu.ca. As a nation, Canada has participated in all of the major world conflicts. In the Sioux area alone, over 10,000 men and women have enlisted in the Canadian Armed Forces. The Veterans Commemorative Monument aims to cement the legacy of the Canadian Armed Forces in stone. It will highlight the bravery, strength, courage and sacrifice of our service men and women. In times of need, they volunteered to serve us. Now it is our time to thank and recognize their sacrifice. You can help honor our men and women of service by donating today. To help construct this special, one-of-a-kind monument, visit thosewhoserve.ca to find out how to donate and more. Since 1899, the Machine Shop has been a unique space for innovation and creativity. Once a leading pulp and paper company, the Machine Shop was built by Francis H. Clerg, which later became part of St. Mary's Paper in 1984. After the closure of St. Mary's Paper in 2011, the Machine Shop spent four years vacant. In 2015, the Machine Shop reopened their doors to the community for the first time. From weddings to galas to concerts and festivals, the one-of-a-kind venue has something for everyone. We are proud to work with the community and local nonprofits to host major events such as Festival of Trees, Pearls and Plaid, an evening at Hogwarts and more. While you're here, wind down at the Mill Steakhouse and Wine Bar for a quiet dining experience or watch a game and try a wood fire oven pizza and local draft at the Boiler Room. Don't forget to save room for house-made gelato and baked goods at the Gelato Mill. For more information on the Machine Shop events, history and restaurants, visit machineshopinc.ca. Three great places, one historic venue. KC Security, take care of you and me, KC Security. I just wrote that jingle for KC Security because they're our sponsor for the whole month and we want to thank no, them you very have to much. remember that. KC Security, take care of you and me, KC Security. I got it. All right, he's got it. Copyrighted. Nobody can steal that. Rihanna, no, hands no. off my song. <laughs> Speaking of Rihanna, she had a run-in Are you with, kidding me? I yeah, just did a segue no, for you like yeah, that? Seriously. She, um, she was in... The UK. Okay. She was UK. actually at the Cricket World Cup in England. Ooh. And she ran into a favorite teacher of hers from when she went to school in the Bahamas. And she started crying. Oh. She was so touched. At the and then, beach. yeah, and then um, uh, huge hugs and uh, like spoke with him for about five minutes and just kept hugging him. And she kept saying, best teacher, best teacher. And then she posted a picture of the two of them together and she says, my mentor, my champ, my MVP, my school teacher, Mr. Eastwick, you made my day. Wow. Yeah, she was she just really, he was, overwhelmed. What did he teach her? I don't know. Je oh, phys ed. Seems like Which it was is why possessed. she's such a great athletic right. a dancer. Great, she exactly. He gave she's her a strong woman. Strong. Yeah. Um, have you ever had That's a lovely. teacher like that? That really. Yes, Madame Kozachenko. Oh, there's a name. Yeah, yeah. Her... Did you have to spell that name? Yes. In what grade? One grade one. How'd you spell Kozachenko in grade one? K O Z A N C H. Oh look, there's you and Mrs. Kozachenko. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Mrs. Kozachenko. Yeah. Wow, she looks different. And so do I. That I was me as teacher. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Miss. Where did, did you see her and like cry and stuff? Yeah, I did. I did that with Kathy Chapetta. Did you? Well, she's Mrs. Orlando. When I had her, she was Miss Chapetta. Ah. I came home to Sault Ste. Marie in 1996. I was working for my friend Allison, who was managing the Roots uh -huh. store in the mall. Mm -hmm. And I was working in the Roots store, and in came Kathy Chapetta, and I hadn't, well, Mrs. Orlando, and I hadn't seen her <gasps> since Sacred Heart days, and I cried. I know. I was like, Miss Chapetta, you were the best. Grade three, grade four. Uh, yeah. yeah and I had really it for two affect. split grades. So yeah. 
Oh, yeah. And a close uh, second was Madame Pichet because um, she was the kindergarten teacher. And I, out of the whole class, was the only person at the end of the year on the last day of school to get a little statue of the Virgin Mary because I didn't miss one day of school. <laughs> Thank you. So Madame Kozachenko and Madame Pichet. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I did. And you know what? No. I what? broke it. No! And my mother glued it. And then my mother wrote in my mother's handwriting, 1966, Madame Pichet. How big was the statue? It was about that big. Oh, it's that's a, not that little. It's on my dresser. You decapitated Mary? No, no. Her oh. foot. Her foot. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God, don't even. Her foot? Don't even. The head. No, not no. the head. No, you, no, no. She lost a foot. Yeah, she lost but a foot. But she glued it back on. It's a miracle. But you know what? She stands on my dresser. Still to this yes, day? To this day. It's on my dresser. Wait, and in your she, bedroom? Yes. Where you have sex? Yes. The Virgin Mary watches? Yes. Ooh. She's okay with it. <laughs> she, I asked her. She, yeah. And my bouquet from my wedding to Jim is uh, right beside her. Oh, Important things in my life. <laughs> Oh yeah, Jim's there too, by the way. I don't even know what to say. I didn't I didn't anticipate that. You know what? You. Lots of people don't think I'm that person. And generally I'm not like a, a Mickey Neck. Well, there's a shrine person. on your dresser, the Virgin Mary and Dead Flowers. It's like, what? All right then. They're not dead flowers. <laughs> They're a loving bouquet of dried roses. Goof. Okay, you're the dead virgin then. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I never even had Listen, that thought. We have to he go. He said it. Um, Arch is having their butterfly release. That's coming up after the news. But I'm Luen scared. Has, Luann has the news first, and I don't know what you're going to tell us, but I hope it's good if, news. If you're going to the butterfly release, you're, there's going to be a hawk eating all the butterflies. Stop it! Heathen man. Never mind hawks, we got falcons. Anyway, take it. We have news coming up right after this. Stay with us. <laughs> Coming to get you, Barbara. Listen to them. Children of the night. Alive! It's alive! A car ended up flipped over at Albert and Andrew yesterday afternoon following a two-vehicle collision. A small-sized truck and mid-sized passenger vehicle collided at the intersection around 4 p.m. Sioux fire crews were dispatched to the scene. No injuries were reported. Last Saturday afternoon, Manitoulin OPP responded to a single dirt bike collision in Whitefish Falls. The operator of the dirt bike, who was located deceased, has been identified now as 21-year-old Tristan Strub from Fergus, Ontario. That investigation is ongoing. A pair of peregrine falcons successfully nested on the Sault Ste. Marie International Bridge, where the birds have been returning for years now, and they are currently raising three chicks. Another pair of the endangered birds has successfully nested on the Portage Lake Lift Bridge again this year, hatching four chicks there. The peregrine falcon has been removed from our federal endangered species list, but is still listed as an endangered species in Michigan. Last year, the Bridge Authority put up a video camera trained on the nest box. The live video stream is at suebridge.com slash falcam. 
A group of indigenous women are returning to a Toronto park where they faced a confrontation last week. Members of the Swift Current Singers were hosting a drum circle at David Crombie Park on June 25th when they were harassed by three older white men who yelled at them for drumming. The incident was recorded and posted on Facebook by Sarah Louie, one of the group's members who was present during the incident. The video showed three men approaching the group in the park while they were drumming who called called their music monotonous, used expletives, and kicked one of the members' drums. It's concerning to see a man standing over a woman and being aggressive. It felt abusive, it felt unsafe. Um, and it was kind of scary being in this space that's supposed to be a public space uh, in downtown Toronto, also known as Tacoronto. We're warrior women and we're willing to stand here and sing our songs and share our medicine with people and we felt that it was important. And we had such a huge um, humbling experience with all of the people supporting us that we thought it would be good to open it up to everybody who wanted to come. I'm very thankful for the outcome. Uh, today, it was the sentencing. You know, but I guess it's just how the, the law system works. You know, never, I could never be fully satisfied the out, the, of any outcome when it comes down to the justice system. Brett Ronald Overby, who stabbed a woman almost a dozen times in Winnipeg and then dumped her body in a ditch, has been sentenced to life in prison with no chance at parole for 15 years. The family of the victim, Christine Wood, spoke to media after the sentencing. I speak on behalf of my family. We are pleased to see our daughter's killer brought to justice today. Our daughter was a beautiful young indigenous girl who had the whole, had her whole life in front of her. And today marks a day where justice has been served and vindication for the life of a very beautiful, intelligent woman. And no sentencing will ever compensate for the loss of a precious young woman such as Christine. Volodymyr Zelensky made his North American debut for the Ukraine Reform Conference, which Toronto hosted. As some of you know, I had the immense privilege of visiting Ukraine as Prime Minister just a few years ago. And the highlight of that trip was visiting Canadian troops stationed near the western border. Since 2015, the Canadian Armed Forces have trained over 12,500 members of Ukraine's security forces as part of Project Unifier. And meeting with our servicemen and women on the ground and seeing their incredible professionalism firsthand reminded me of two things. The value of teamwork and our shared dedication to a safe and secure Ukraine. Welcome to The Machine Shop, our historic venue and gathering place for friends and family. Built in 1899 on the site of a Northwest Company trading post. Today we are a go-to venue hosting many expos, concerts, weddings and more. While you're here, choose one of our dining experiences. Enjoy a quiet dinner at the Mill Steakhouse and Wine Bar, watch a game in Triwood Fire Oven Pizza and local draft at the Boiler Room, or treat yourself every day to gelato and local coffee at the Gelato Mill. For more information on The Machine Shop, visit machineshopinc.ca. discover all kinds of treasures and never pay more than five dollars inventory is restocked every Saturday and you can find anything from electronics to household items toys and much much more on Saturday everything is five dollars and the price goes down throughout the week ending with 25 cents on Friday 
We restock weekly with new items from various big box stores, so you never know what treasures you can find. Come visit us at quarter to five, 2510 Ashman Street in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Have a great business idea but don't know where to start? Need help taking your business to the next level? C2C Business Services can be your guide in navigating the path of entrepreneurship with services ranging from grant funding support, access to service experts, market information, and helping your business adopt new technologies to create and foster a culture of innovation for ongoing success. Call C2C Business Services and let them be your first step in taking your entrepreneurial dreams from concept to commerce. C2C Business Services is a division of the Sault Ste. Marie Innovation Center. heard this or not but uh, apparently there might be a breaking bad movie coming did you ever watch breaking bad the meth thing yes hey i i watched a lot of it and then i was binging and it just got to be a little overwhelming because mm. it's heavy yeah it's a very but heavy funny yeah hilarious so apparently brian cranston and aaron paul the two main leads that aaron paul guy he's great Isn't i mean he awesome? brian cranston is a fat, yeah. great actor but that He's yeah, he's yeah. very good. Okay. So anyway. what happened yesterday is at the exact same moment they both posted the same picture of two donkeys on social media and said soon. So somehow that means maybe the movie's coming soon. Are they going to end up riding across the desert on the backs of donkeys or something in like eras? Where, what's because they're in some? Remember they go out in the state, whatever yeah. state they're in, in the yeah. in the in the storyline. Trailer is right? yeah, they're yeah. always out like in the middle of a desert kind of thing. But you know oh, what? there's the donkeys. They, yeah, that's the picture. So well, question you, that's is, a nice what are they going to do with Brian Cranston's um, character because he was like at the end of the series well so is he going to be in flashbacks maybe will it all be a dream who knows stay tuned <laughs> <laughs> that was ladies and gentlemen that was the trailer for breaking bad the film, <laughs> right there that was it they're going to use that on, on you know <laughs> hey speaking of movies quentin tarantino huge huge guy i mean not him huge career yes director, director. of a, a ton of uh, awesome movies he Off, says like we he does yeah like, he's he's very he's quirky edgy, ed, yeah quirk, quirky's a great yeah, word for yeah. him yeah you anyway. can always count on some little kind of what you wouldn't expect well there in, he in is he movies. acts too Adam. yes he does not mm. as often as he directs though but Correct. he said for years he's been saying after 10 movies i'm retiring from directing and retiring from movies. Well, his ninth movie is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is out now or just coming oh. out. And he's saying, yeah, one more and then I'm done. But then he says, you know what? I'm going to be writing books and writing theater. So he'll still be- He's going to write like, plays? Ooh. In the creative mode. But yeah, so Quentin Tarantino. One more I film? I think he could probably afford to stop working if he wants to. Maybe he and Anderson Cooper can run off into the sunset together. Yeah. He also did that quirky movie with the princess, um, ha Princess Bride. Princess Bride was that Quentin Tarantino? I think so. Wasn't it the cartoony one? The, with 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 the wrestler? Yeah, yeah. What was it? Andre the Giant? Oh, and maybe we're not thinking of the same thing. That was that was. Uh, what was the one too? We were trying to remember the movie. What was that one called, you guys? You know, John Travolta, John Travolta and, and Paul Fiction. Paul Fiction. Thank that you. That movie freaked me out. Yeah, that was a bit weird. I watched it twice, and I still kind of went. When they stuck the needle in the heart, kind of thing, oh, to bring them back to life after they OD. Right. Lee. Did you ever see that movie, Pulp Fiction? Watch oh, it. It's, it's, it's violent. Harsh. It's very, very harsh. Look at Bad is hair that, on both of those. Is Samuel guys. L. Jackson? I don't know. I think or is it? it I is, think it, it is. is so. Samuel L. Jackson and John was, Travolta. And Uma Both Thurman. with bad dues. <laughs> like the hair, boys. Just saying. Did you ever have a perm, Lou? I did. Yeah. Did you? When I was married the first time. I think time. I might have asked you this. Yeah. Tight, tight, tight curls. Me too. I had a perm once. Yeah. If I, I look like my mamere. If I wore fuzzy slippers, I looked like a Q-tip. <clears throat> I was very thin then. Yes, you're very, very Hey, small coming guy. up on the show, I have Julie Primo and Bree Bennett from Arch. They've been on the show. They're delightful guests. You remembered their names. I did. I'm and... So <laughs> <laughs> and 
Not just that. I'm learning about the butterfly release. I never oh, knew about this. This is beautiful. How did that? It's been going on for a number of years. I think five. How did I miss it? Let's find out. You're going to want to know too. Because Arch needs our help in raising money because they have to exist on $75,000 a year, which they get only from fundraising. So, ready? Butterfly release? You in? Let's find out next on Mornings with Lou and Tim. <laughs> Disease and stroke is the number one killer of women. It's always nice to be joined by Julie Primo in the studio, and it's even better when she brings Bree Bennett with her. No offense. Bree. Just kidding. Anyway, hi ladies, welcome back to Mornings with Luann. <gasps> Look what they did for us. Oh, pretty. Beautiful butterflies. How did I not know about this fundraiser? You didn't know about I, it? I don't, I wasn't paying no. attention. Me bad. How many years, Brie? This is our fifth year. Five years of butterfly mm -hmm. release. Tell me, where did the idea come from? Does it like, oh, yeah, yes. Julie. So it uh -huh. was my first summer at Arch and one of our new volunteers, Dorothy, was from Southern Ontario. Mm -hmm. And she had helped the Muskoka Hospice do a fundraiser for a butterfly release. So we had about three weeks to do the first inaugural oh. event. And That's we were, pretty fast to throw one together. Yes, but we were able to do it and then it's become an annual event and we always have it around the third or fourth Thursday in July so and it's on July 18th this year. July 18th. Mm -hmm. Where does it take place, Bree? At the Bellevue Park Band Show. <gasps> The band shell. Oh, that's where the hill is, and then there's the band. Okay, it's I got gotcha. you. Yeah, lots of space, nice wide mm -hmm. open. Oh, and there's no trees above. So you actually release. Tell me how the whole concept, like what do we do? What? So individuals that have purchased a butterfly before July 11th are able to release their butterfly at the band shell. So we do hand them out at the day of. How come before July 11th? Because we have to pre-order oh, them. Or pre-order the mm -hmm. butterflies. Yes. Oh, they have to order the butterflies, people. Of course. The butterflies yes. need to know where they're going. They need to mark it on their calendars. And then they're given individual butterflies, and they can release them. They warm them up with their hands. Wait. How does the butterfly come to you? When I get there, and I it's say, in, hi, my name is carton. Tim. A little a cardboard carton. carton yeah. And then they warm it up with their hands, and they let you it go. You warm the cardboard carton up with your mm -hmm. hands. Mm -hmm. And well, then... The butterfly's inside. Inside of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I gathered that, Yeah. Julie. So the butterfly wakes up. Oh, is that what? Okay, because the heat makes it go. Oh, mm -hmm. I want to. And then you open the cardboard thing, and you do it all at the same time. All at the same time. Mm -hmm. How many butterflies have you had in the past? 
We've had the roughly... The most we've ever had is 400, and we have potential to sell 600. What does that look like? 400 butterflies going into the sky at the same time. It's very beautiful. I'll bet. How, how, how many times have you been there? Twice, once? This is my second year. You've done 2K. Uh, where do we, how do we buy butterflies? So you can buy butterflies online at Arch Hospice slash butterflies. Oh, Michael has a graphic to put up that has the address www.archhospice.ca slash butterflies. Yes. Okay, so we go there. There it is. Thank you, Michael. Perfect. You go to that website and you can purchase butterflies. How much do butterflies cost us? 30 for one or four for 100. Oh, so you get, oh, so it's a discount if you buy in bulk. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if I have, well, actually, we were talking about this, I'm not going to lie, in the green room. So Luann and Megan Parlow, our reporter, and Alex Parr, our reporter, and um, my, my understudy, and myself, the four of us are going to buy four for a hundred. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, what if we can't be there? What if we're working or something? What time is the release at? It is at, everyone comes for six o'clock. And we have live music, oh, Michael, kids' put the activities. Up. Thanks, Michael. Oh, Wait, perfect. so six o'clock we arrive. Yep. Live music. Mm -hmm. You come mm -hmm. on the band show. Mm -hmm. yes. That's why it's called it's the band beautiful. show. Okay, so live music. What else? Kids stuff. Kids activities, and then mm -hmm. at seven o'clock we all release them all at the same time. Okay. And if you're not able to make it, we can release them for you. Oh, so if I can't be there, or like if Alex or Megan is reporting mm -hmm. something and they have to work that night, you could yep. release it on their behalf. Okay, great. Now. Um, the, how much have you raised in the past? Is this so the butterfly release because the cost of the butterfly is is fairly high. Mm -hmm. um, it's not one of our largest fundraisers, but we usually fundraise between four and seven thousand. Well, that's great. which is still which is still very good. As if you know, you get to seven thousand, that's about ten percent of what you need to operate. No, we. It was funny last time you said seventy five thousand, but we're seven hundred and fifty thousand. I know. Shut the front door. Seven hundred fifty thousand. See, see how <laughs> I feel terrible that I've been broadcasting the wrong amount. I left the zero <laughs> off, and that's a huge. That's a huge. Seven hundred. Seven seven hundred and fifty. Well, if you saw the place, if you haven't been, right. you'll understand why it takes that much money to. Because it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, seven hundred and fifty thousand. That's one. One percent. Exactly. But it's, it's, but it's beautiful, good. and it's but it's beautiful, and it's also memorable, and it gets a lot of attention, and it brings focus to what Arch does. So the butterfly release, anyone who's gone to it, it is tremendously healing, and the stories that individuals share with us, it's a lot of our past families that go, um, someone who's lost someone. It's 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 very uh, transformative, mm. and the butterfly release is one of those ones where you really. Um, you put it on because you really know it's going to make a big difference in people's lives. Symbolic, Brie? Yeah. The butterfly? This is definitely my favorite event. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess the, the whole thing about transitioning, changing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then being ha having being set free, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So, um, we're going to go down to Bellevue Park, but we have to order before July 11th. What's today? The 3rd. Yeah, lots of time. Okay, you got you got eight days to get online, or where else do we go? You can go downtown to the Station Mall oh, between okay. eleven and six for every day this week. In you the can food purchase, list? You can purchase a butterfly. We have volunteers down there. Your volunteers are there seven hours a day, five, six days this week. Seven. Only this week. This yes. that's and amazing. Doing shifts. <laughs> that's so nice yes. of them to do that. Yeah, they're we, fantastic. People volunteer. Okay, so they're down there. We can buy uh, twenty-five dollars for four uh, each for four. Yeah, twenty five dollars. Or thirty individually. Yep. Do people do things like um, are there things to fill out where you do like it in memory of somebody and stuff like that? Yes. So most people are doing it in memory of someone, but we've also have people coming to celebrate with families. I take my children every year. Mm -hmm. So they've been going for five years and my son's birthday always lines up mm -hmm. around that time and my kids look forward to it and just the spectacle of it. It, it it like we can't really explain it, but when you're there it's almost like time stops and it's just breathtaking. Are there presentations? Do people speak? Are, are, do people with lived experience? Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I speak. Um, I'm the master of ceremonies, and then Mayor Christian Provenzano mm -hmm. speaks every year, and then we usually have one past family. Oh. And then it's um, the band is Roman Paradun, and so like the music that I don't know if you know him at all, but yeah, Roman and Roman uh, on the guitar. And so the songs that they always pick at the release, it's it's songs like Alleluia, um, oh. the dog and the butterfly. They're just absolutely beautiful. I probably cry. So, I cry. You're allowed. I think I'm I allowed. cry every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because that's a beautiful thing. Okay, so um, online, the mall, station mall, at 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day this week? Yep. Or at Arch Hospice, fourth line. What intersection are you closest to? 
We're if I come up, uh, peoples and moss. So if I come up peoples road and hang a left. Yep. Is that what I want to do? Yep. Mm -hmm. And we're on the left, just past the tracks. Yeah. The there's Brule. a there's a sign. Yes. Okay. And if you haven't been, you welcome visitors, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah, because they, you, did, you do you do guided tours of the place. You buy, that's by appointment, really. You should call for an appointment. Uh, well, yes and no. Really? Okay. No, most of the time our, our volunteers are so skilled that if one of the staff members are not available, one of our volunteers, if it's on a weekday, can usually do a tour as well. They're fantastic. Well, the yeah. tours are fa I mean, I'm still impacted by the time that I visited there. Mm -hmm. And we were, yeah, I was blown away. You're and, welcome and then, back anytime. What's that? You're welcome back anytime. Thank yeah. you. Hey, you know what? And I wanted to give a shout out, of course, one of my favorite people who's a huge supporter of Arch is my mm -hmm. friend Sally Toivonen. Yes. And so uh, I want to say hi to Sally. and. Uh, Thanks for uh, doing all that you do for Arch. We all can do a little something extra. So go out to the mall, to Arch, or online. Mm -hmm. Buy your butterflies, and then go down and release them at Bellevue Park on the 18th, mm -hmm. 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else, Julie? Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you two for being here. Um, when can I see you again? Well, we will be back. We have the cycle event on September 15th and oh. the golf tournament on September 6th, so we'd love to come back. Oh, then you have to come back at the end of August for September the 6th. Yes, please. Okay, we'll see you then. Okay. In the meantime, I'll see you with the butterfly release. Continue to enjoy your summer, and we'll be back with Luann after this. On Mornings with Luann and Tim. What do you wish for? A nice life? Nice things? Or do you wish for something more? A sense of purpose? Do you wish to discover a cure? To write code that cracks an unsolvable question? To further our exploration into space? Or to invent something that changes everything right here on Earth? Well. If that's your wish, make yourself ready. Because when you look back, you'll see that you didn't just make wishes, you realize them. mother and I am a sister. I'm a father. A wife, a daughter. I'm a Somali lady. I can very proudly say that I'm a teacher. A social worker. I'm a human being. I have a dream to be free. And I wish we live in the world full of peace. Oh, hey. Wait, what was the question? Let me guess. One driving high combo, extra baked? No. Uh, could I get a burger with a side of... Fries? Think you're a better driver when you're high? Think again. If you smoked weed, wait at least four hours before getting behind the wheel. Or don't drive at all if you're new to it, have eaten it, or if you've mixed it with alcohol. KC Security, on guard for you and me, Ooh. KC Security. Thank you for being our sponsor this month. That's my jingle. I love that jingle. Thank you. I think you should um, sell it to them <laughs> for a lot of money <laughs> so they can keep sponsoring the show. Uh, Hope you had an awesome wellness What are you Wednesday. doing tomorrow? What am I doing tomorrow? What do you mean? You going to do a show with me? Yeah, I might. Bum slide Thursday, Lou. Bum slide Thursday. Bum we'll slide. See you yes. Bum slide. Bum slide Wednesday. <laughs> Thanks.